Hey guys, so what am I working on now? Well, I got the Chevy Cruze here, and I was supposed to rotate the tires. Ran into a problem. What would you do? So here we are at this wheel. This is the left front. I just stuck that on for right now. This one. I noticed the lug was hanging out. It was never fully seated. So I put my gun on there to try to back it out. And it, I mean, and my gun is a good strong gun. It's a, the DeWalt XR half inch drive, electric, 20 volt. And it's a strong gun. And it was just sitting there going ta 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 ta. So I tried to tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, loosen it. All of a sudden, the stud broke free. So, stud breaks free. I showed you in the past on some vehicles, you can go from the backside and weld the stud to the hub. I have no access on the backside of this. So now what? All right, the reason I put that one other lug back on was because the whole wheel was loose. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up the wheel. I'm gonna put a screwdriver or something behind or between the wheel and the hub, and I'll explain that while I'm doing it. So right now, all I'm gonna do is loosen this up. I'm gonna put you in my tripod in a minute. Actually, I'm going to probably take this one completely out. Because I want to have pressure on the on the stud. Because what I'm going to do is, i got to drill this out. I have no choice. i got to drill this out. I'm not getting it out any other way. So, what I'm going to do is, in that gap there, I'm going to slip like a small screwdriver or a chisel or something. Then I'm going to tighten up a lug nut on this side. This way, it seesaws the rim on the um, small screwdriver or whatever I have sitting in there to put pressure on this lug. Because if I go to start to drill this out and the drill catches, the whole thing's just going to spin. It'll be for naught. So let me set this up into my tripod and then I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I go along. Now another thing that I've mentioned in the past, I try not to rehearse anything. Sometimes I go a little bit ahead to see how something's going to work out in the scanner and then I go back and show you. Like this, I haven't done anything yet, obviously. So, how would you do this? Do you do something different? I'm just curious. The way I do it is I drill it out. So, where'd I put it? Right here. I have a, I picked this up at um, Lowe's, I think it was. Or I had Mo do it, so I think it was Lowe's, because they're close. Picked up this Mibro Titanium Extra Life half inch drill bit. So I'm gonna use this and drill that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop the head of this off because this is just a tin cap. It's just a chrome sleeve, basically. I'm going to chop, the, chop it off. This way, I could see the stud in there, and the lug nut will also act, act like a guide to help guide this in place. So, but like I said, I, I try not to rehearse anything, so what you see is what you get. So, you know, yeah, I make mistakes in the video sometimes. Some people point it out. I might misspeak, stuff like that. I finally figured out how to edit that and actually put in, you know, hey, I meant to say this, even though I said the wrong thing. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so what you see is what you get. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, this is what I go through on a daily basis. So hopefully you can see what I'm going to go through. I'm not going to show you the entire time I'm drilling it. I'll show you part of it in the beginning and then, you know, maybe as we go along. But I'm not going to sit there and show you because it, it could take 15 minutes. I'm not going to show you 15 minutes of a drill going in a circle. So, but let's get going on this and let's see what happens. All right, let me get you set up first and then we'll figure it out. So as it turns out, I don't have a screwdriver or anything that will fit into this height to fit down there. So I have this door panel tool, and I can get this door panel tool wedged down inside there. And then I'm going to put one lug on, and hopefully this will do what I want it to. Maybe I'll put another lug on just to be on the safe side. Now you don't want to go bananas tightening it. It's, it's just to hold pressure on that. That's all that's for. So now, let me grab... Actually, let me grab another chair. This one's squeaky as all get out. So now, like I said, what I'm going to try to do is just chop the head of this off. Again. Should probably use a sharper chisel, but this is what I had handy. So you get the idea. Let me just get this off of here. You don't have to watch the entire thing. 
All right, so there it's coming off. Now, whenever you have something like this too, you have to tell the customer there is a possibility of some minor rim damage. What you can do too is you can put tape on the rim to protect it if you wanted to. This rim is far from perfect. But I might do that in a bit if I can't get the rest of this off. There we go. So now, let me just take my drill bit and let's get you all closer. And we'll go closer. You can see the chrome cover there. Let me actually see if I can't dig that out a little bit. Okay, actually, I might have to, I might have to get in between here and chisel out the rest of this thing. Give me a second. All right, so there we go. I got, it opened up basically with a screwdriver. Like I said, if you think you're going to damage the rim, you can always protect it with some tape. You're, you, tape is only going to do so much. Like I said, this, this rim is far from perfect, and you're never going to really pay attention to everything that's here, but that's good enough. So, let's see if we can't get in there, and let's drill that out. So now, oops, let's, And don't go super fast with the drill bit. And this is what we're going to have to do the whole way through. So let me just keep going. Once it started cutting, it really started cutting good. So I had to really lean into it, put some, put some of my heavy weight into it. going it's going it's just taking a little time now I did stop several times to spray some WD-40 in there and the drill is set on its slow speed don't be afraid to go slow just go fast all you're doing is you're you're smoking your bit and I try to save the bits as much as possible because that, by the time you're done with this usually this bit is shot See the build up there. I mean, the material's coming out, so that's good. It's getting there. It's just about equal to the height of the acorn, so I'm happy with that. You said this procedure takes time now. When you're doing this, just be pre be prepared for it to take some time. Let me shut this thing off. And also be prepared for the drill to get hot. <laughs> Obviously, you want to try to go in as straight as possible, which is sometimes not easy to do. All 
right, I think it's down, down below the height of the lug. It's possible that I can get that thing off now. Let's see. I'm going to try a little trick here. Take these lugs off. slightly on there, but not quite ready yet. All right. let, me, let, me, let me reset everything up. All right, let's get back to it from a distance for you. Maybe you can see the whole thing break free. I don't know. Be careful too, so the drill doesn't catch and kick and smack me inside of my face. Because I won't be happy. finally starting to get dull. This should come off of here. It's, it's like right there. Like I said, usually by the time you're done drilling one of these, that drill bit is shot. Of this cover off of here. chrome off of there this is now an 18 millimeter so with an 18 millimeter and there we go now it's off see that 
And you can see some of that chrome is still on there. But now, we can actually get the wheel off. Now let me get a stud and lug on the way, because then we're going to have to pull the brakes apart. We're going to have to change that stud. Hopefully a new stud will seat fine in the hub. With everything off now, if you see, you see the lug there. You can just see the end of it, how it, got, it started to get all boogered up. Anyway, here's an issue. It won't come out. You could try hammering it out. It's not going to come out. You get it to that point, it's still not going to come out hitting there. So what do you do? I'm going to slice this in half. This way I can get this thing out. I'm not going to show you that. I'm just, you can take a sawzall, a hacksaw. I'm going to take a die grinder or a cut off wheel rather. I'm just going to slice it off. But then how do you install the new one? Let's get this out of there first and then I'll explain that. And hopefully my explanation will work. <laughs> so I used my cut off wheel there and I cut that down. So now that <coughs> should pop out. It might be hot. Yep. So now, obviously, this ain't going to fit. So what do you do? What do you do in a situation like this? Well, there is a possibility I might have to do this. You may have to unbolt the hub and pull the hub out slightly in order to get this in. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to grind down part of this flat. Some of these, some people may say, oh, you can't do that. You're going to harm the integrity of it. Some of these come through from the factory with the end of it trimmed off just for that reason. So let me try that first and see what happens. You may also, or you may want to even try, sometimes I've seen people grind this down slightly. You could do that. It's not going to really hurt nothing. Um, but let's try grinding this flat first and see what happens. So there, I ground off part of it, as you see. And like I said, you can a lot of these wheel studs come through with an end ground off like that for this very reason. But here's the problem. It's still not going to go. It's way too much of an angle. Way, way, way too much of an angle, unfortunately. Um, you know, could I try to trim down this piece a little bit? Maybe. Is that what I'm going to do? No. No, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unbolt the hub. And hopefully the hub itself will come out a little bit. All I got to do is get it to come out a little bit. Once it comes out, and if it cocks a little bit, I should be able to get this in there. So, those look like 18s. It's amazing. They use these gigantic 18s headed bolts on here but then you get on a truck or something like that and they use like a 13 millimeter head weird uh yeah so let's get these bolts out i'm gonna leave one in place and then we're gonna go from there so wound up having to take the whole darn thing out remember i said i don't rehearse these things so that's what wound up happening i had to take the whole thing out now it feels nice smooth it's tight there's no play to it so it's just gonna get a stud that's all and see, they actually put a notch here. Can you see that? A little divot. So you have a recess to get the wheel stud through. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt this back in place. And then we're going to tighten this up. And I'll show you how to actually install this. Um, this is actually a rarity where you got to take the whole thing apart like this. Had this bearing felt anything peculiar, then I would be replacing it. But it feels perfectly fine. So... I'm not worried about it. It's nice. It's got nice snugness to it. It's very smooth, so I'm not worried about it. And also, if you notice, the back of the bearing here, see this surface here? That's actually a, a magnetic window, and that is for the ABS sensor. That's what the ABS sensor reads off of, is that. As the wheel is turning, it reads off of that. So I just wanted to show you that. So you've seen me use this tool before, and I will put a link in the description. It is, I don't even know who makes this. Got a patent on it. 742-1789. Uh, you could get these at pretty much any parts store. It is kind of like a throwout bearing. See that? It's a bearing on the inside there. But you slide it over. Take your lug nut. Now I already put um, WD on the threads. And what you're going to do, and you can see it there. The socket on there. Then you're going to basically tighten it up till it stops. There it stops. You're done. 
installed nice nice shoot what i should do is i should show you one day how to do it without the tool so i'm sure a lot of you are not going to have the tool what you could do is you could put washers on there you just got to make sure because sometimes the neural part is going to come through and if you're using washers i think i did show you that on one of the other videos but if you're using washers and the neural part comes through sometimes you could press the washer onto the stud and then you have a dickens of a time getting the darn thing back off because it's pressed onto there so just something to keep in mind so as i always say reverse the procedure to install i'm not going to show you putting this all back together uh, but that's pretty much it so let's get this part of this done this way we can get this car out of here and back to the customer all right so we're in the cobalt i'm getting ready to take it for a ride why am i taking it for, for a ride for a lug nut I take everything for a ride. I want to know what's going on with the car. Because this way, when a customer picks it up, I could tell them everything I know about the car for my road test. So that's the reason I road test everything. Uh, I've mentioned that before, but I figured let me just reiterate. All right, guys, if you're getting something on my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.